Hey everyone, I'm Colin here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to take a look at the Malone Microsport Low Bed Trailer. Now this trailer is a nice accessory for your vehicle. It's going to allow you to get any of that excess cargo, any of that bigger equipment like our kayaks to your destination if you just don't have enough space in your vehicle like our Jeep right there or if your roof rack is taken up by other stuff like our bikes. Now a couple of things that set this trailer apart from a lot of others out there is it is going to be sitting lower to the trailer unlike the Microsport normal one which sits about you know a good foot foot and a half up higher than this one is. Comes in handy for loading and unloading you're not going to have to lift those bigger equipment like our kayaks or even canoes up onto the trailer. You can be able to keep it at waist level to get it loaded less strenuous on your back as well. Another great feature is that it's also going to be sitting lower, like I said, which gives you full visibility out of your rear window while you're driving. If it's sitting that foot to foot and a half higher, the kayaks would take away a lot of that visibility so we can't see what's behind us. Now, another really great feature I really like about this trailer is that it's very lightweight and easy to handle, so you're not gonna need any extra hands to get it moved. Just to get it off the trailer, pull that latch up on the coupler. We have this nice handle that's integrated onto the coupler. We just pull it up, and even with that load, very easily I can move it around and put it wherever I need to. Now another great feature about this trailer is that it is offered with a second tier option to add so you have two crossbars above the two kayaks we have loaded. We can get any excess cargo or gear up there whether we got a cargo box to get our luggage in or we can get more bike racks or another kayak up there. Now overall this trailer is just going to be very handy. It's got a wide variety of uses. Not only is it going to be able to carry our kayaks, but you can carry a wide variety of other sports and recreational equipment or other stuff to help haul your cargo. Just really going to make it life a lot easier when trying to take all your stuff on a trip and you're not going to have to make those tough decisions about what to leave behind. Now we're going to go ahead and unload the kayaks, but first I want to show you guys how easy it is to get this stuff unloaded. Instead of having to reach up on top of your roof to get your kayaks down where you might need an extra set of hands, or even that foot, foot and a half higher of the Microsport trailer, this one, I can just get my arm right under it, get it right up and off. Now the entire frame along with the crossbars of our trailer is going to be made from an 11 gauge pre-galvanized steel construction. So it is going to be lightweight and durable as well as be rust and corrosion resistant. Now our crossbars are going to be 78 inches in their width, so it's going to be plenty of space to get multiple accessories or cargo on top of the trailer. We're also going to have these D-ring tie-down points at each corner of the crossbar to help for securing our cargo. Now we're going to go ahead and give you some measurements so you can get an idea of the space this will take up for storage purposes and for when you're hauling it. The overall length of the trailer is going to be 13 feet and 3 inches, so just about the length of a jet ski trailer, maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter, depends on the jet ski. The width of the trailer with the crossbars on is going to be 78 inches, while if you don't have the crossbars installed, it's going to be 55 inches. And it's also going to be sitting about 22 inches off the ground. It does have a weight capacity of 800 pounds, which is more than enough to get your kayaks or canoes loaded and strapped down. It's going to have two 12-inch wheels with tire size ST145R12, so it is going to be rated for highway speeds, and that tire size is also going to come in handy for if you need to pick up a spare tire we also sell spare tire mounts here at each other that you can have with you at all times. Now we also have two leaf springs that are mounted to the axle of our trailer. This is just going to help absorb a lot of the impact and a lot of the vibration you would get when traveling at high speeds. Now our middle support crossbar is going to be mounted to the frame of our trailer using these U-bolts with the brackets on bottom. We have that tightened down so that it's secure. And then we also have these brackets connecting our long crossbars to our support bars. When all that tighten, is tightened down, it's just really going to be very supportive, very durable, and just hold up to all that use. Our coupler up front is going to fit any two inch size ball mount. It's also going to have this nice handle that I talked about with a nice rubber grip to assist you with moving it around. We're going to have our safety chains, which are connected under here with our stopper. When you want to un hook your trailer. All you're going to do is unplug the wiring, take your two safety chains off. I usually like to wrap these around the frame of the tongue right there. From here, you want to pull up on that lock. That is also a nice feature. When it's locked into place, it's not going to be able to bounce up off of our ball mount. When we unlock it, we can pick it up. And again, that stopper is going to be able to be set on top of and hold the weight of the trailer. The submersible LED lighting system is going to be DOT compliant in all 50 states and in Transport Canada. We are going to have a light under our driver's side taillight to help light up our license plate so it is visible. Now the whole trailer itself is submergible just like the lights, so you can back it down the boat ramp to release your canoes or kayaks off of your trailer rather than carrying them to the water. Now that we've gone over some of those features, let's show you how to get it put together. 
Now, per the instructions, we have our frame laid out for the trailer and the formation that it specifies. One thing I do want to make sure you guys know is that you want the trailer upside down to start. So you see that the Malone sticker is upside down. This is just going to make assembly a lot easier for when you get to the tires. You're going to be able to flip it right over after you get those installed. First thing you want to do is get your spring hanger bracket set in the right place. We're going to be on the top of the frame right here. The open U-shaped bracket is going to be towards the front of the trailer, while the C-shaped one is going to be at the back. The hardware is included. Now, if you're worried about what, what hardware to use at certain steps in the process, in the instructions, it does tell you the bag number of hardware to use for each specific step. So as long as you look at those, you're going to be all right when getting the hardware together. Drop the bolt in right there. Bring the nut in on the other side. Just get it threaded. Now we'll just grab our 9 16 socket and wrench and tighten it down. Now, quick little tip. When you first get your brackets installed, you wanna make sure that the frame cross member right here is on the other side of them. It'll just be a lot easier to get it in place to slide in without those bolts being in the way. Now we've gone up to the front of the trailer. How you know that you have this in the right configuration, that being the tongue, is you need the three hole side upside down on the left driver's side. Now what we're gonna do is take our plug and our wiring and drop it through the top and feed it all the way back. You can push it like this, or if it's easier, you can go ahead and pick up this side of the tongue and just let gravity do its job. And you do wanna make sure you leave enough excess at the top so that the wiring can reach the back of the vehicle. Here at the back, we'll just pull all the way through till we deem we have enough at the front. Now we also need to pass our wiring through our rear tongue support bracket. Should be facing this way. That little indent is where the rear of our tongue's gonna go. So we'll just take our plug, pass it through all the way up to this point. Now throughout this process, it's gonna be a good idea to get all of your frame ends lined up as you go. So you can see right here, we have the two integrated holes. That's gonna be for these two at the front of our frame. Also same back here with our rear support bracket, the two holes on the ends right here, going to go down here. Now we're gonna take that rear support bracket, put it on the rear of our tongue, then we'll grab the four and a half inch bolt, bring it up from the bottom all the way through, and then a flat washer and a lock nut. Go ahead and thread that on. Now from here, you wanna make sure you get only hand tools. We don't wanna use power tools right here. So we just have a socket and wrench, and we'll tighten it down. Now from here, we need to get our rear support bracket lined up with the holes on our frame. So we need to scoot it up. Just make sure we get it all in line. Once you have the frame support lined up with the holes, going to install the carriage bolts and then apply flat washers to both and then lock nuts to both. Now we're gonna grab our wrench and tighten it down. Make sure you don't use any power tools. This is supposed to be hand tightened. Then repeat this process for the other side. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and take our three quarter inch bolts, apply flat washer, bring it through the frame and the rear of the tongue. Should be lined up correctly. If not, you may have to go back and loosen up the tongue and support bracket bolts. Just bring it all the way through to the other side. From there, take another flat washer, put it on the bolt, then a lock nut. and then tighten it down. And then do the same thing for the other bolt. Now we're gonna get the cross members in place. Again, we already have that front one installed from when we put the brackets on to help out for this step. You wanna make sure that the rear one has that Malone sticker. And again, make it upside down because right now we're installing the trailer upside down. I'm going to slide it in place. This one's gonna be at the very back. I'm gonna get it just even, there we go. Line up the holes correctly. Now with both cross members lined up with the holes, we're gonna take our carriage bolts, feed those through. We're not gonna need washers for these. So once you get both the carriage bolts through, just grab 
your lock nuts and thread those on. Now I'm gonna go around and get all of these pre-installed and then tighten down all at once. Just gonna grab my wrench, make sure you hand tighten these down. I'm just gonna go around, tighten them all down. Now we have our axle and spring assembly. We're gonna go ahead and get the springs attached to our axle. All we're gonna do is take this center nut and get it in the center hole that's pre-assembled into our axle. Getting the first one installed, there's no specific way you have to set the spring. Just make sure you get the other one set the same way. From there, we're just gonna set our plate on top and bring our U-bolts up and through. Then we're just going to thread on our lock nuts. Do the same for the other side. Now from here, we're gonna hand tighten it. Just grab our wrench, tighten down. We're not going to tighten it down all the way until we have each bolt and nut down all the way. Now again, you just want the nuts touching the plate. You're gonna to wanna to have the spring to wiggle, have that wiggle room so you can get it in place later. So once they make contact with the plate, let's move on to the next one. Make sure you get that the same way. So you can see right now, my spring cannot wiggle. That means I over tightened on one of them, which I'm pretty sure it's this one. Let's loosen it and see what happens. Yep, right there. Let's have that wiggle room. Now just repeat this process for the other spring. And again, make sure you get the spring facing the same way as this one. Now we're gonna set our spring and axle assembly into place. We're going to have the flat edge of the spring in the C bracket, and then the rounded part in the U bracket. So we're gonna slide that flat part in. This is where the wiggle room comes into play, just so you can move it around, adjust it as you see fit. And just make sure you line up all the holes. Now once we have our spring into place, we're going to get that eye lined up with the holes on our bracket. Slide that bolt all the way through. Grab a lock nut. Get it on there. Now when you tighten it down, you're only going to go until it's making contact with the face of this bracket. So don't use any power tools, just grab a socket wrench. When tightening this down, it's a good idea just to keep the socket a little bit off of the lock nut right there, just so you can see when it makes contact. Make sure you keep that side pushed down as well. There we go. Now repeat this process for the other side. Now that we have our spring and axle assembly attached to our frame, we're going to go back and tighten down the U-bolts to our plate. The easiest way to do that is just to do a couple turns on each bolt until so it gets as even as possible. We're going to go until we have a slight bend on our tie plate. See we have that slight bend on our plate, so just repeat this process for the other side. Now we're gonna get our tires installed under our axle. We're first gonna take this hub cap. We snapped in the cap onto the hub. We're gonna push it through like so from the back. Then we're gonna grab it, get it lined up with the bolts on our axle. You may have to lift up a little bit on the frame. Once you have all the bolts through the holes, we're just going to thread on our lug nuts. We're only going to hand tighten the lug nuts for now. Now we're gonna go down and tighten down all of our lug nuts. There is a certain specification that they want them torqued to. It's in the instructions. If you have a wrench like this one where you can have it set to that certain amount, that's good. If not, just tighten it down pretty snug in a star pattern. We've already gone in a star pattern. There's our last one. So we're just gonna tighten it down to the specifications. There we go. And then just repeat this process for the other side. Now we're gonna attach the brackets that'll hold our rear lights. What we're gonna do is just line it up with these two holes right here. Insert our carriage bolts on both sides. We'll make sure you get that square lined up and then we'll take lock nuts and thread them on both sides. Then we'll just tighten them down all the way. Now you'll need to remove the hardware from your lights. Go ahead and insert it into the slots right there. You wanna make sure that the wires 
free light are on top, and we'll thread those nuts back on. As tight as you can get them. Now we'll just tighten them down. No need to over tighten, just get it pretty snug. Now we'll move on to the other side. Now the driver's side is going to install the exact same way, the only difference being they have it set up for the license plate holder to go under the driver's side light. There is going to be a light underneath it so that you are illuminating your license plate. The only thing you just want to make sure you do is get the license plate onto these bolts of the light before you put those nuts back on. Now we'll move on to the amber side lights. You want to make sure you take off that hardware real quick. Now what's going to happen is this center bolt is going to go through that center hole and you want to feed the wires one through each. The easiest way to do it to where you're going to get a flush look is have this white wire go through that hole. And then you want to make sure you tuck that brown wire into the backing right here so that it sits so that the light will sit flush on the trailer. You want to be careful about that. Feed it through. And you want to hold it there and pull the wires through. And again, just you want to make sure that it's going to stay flush. You can kind of feel around on the bottom as long as it feels flush, then we'll grab the bolt and put it on the other side. Tighten it down all the way with your hands. Then just grab your wrench, tighten it down all the way. No need to over tighten, just get it pretty snug. Then repeat this process for the other side. Now with the wiring that's in the tongue of our trailer, we're going to take the other wiring harness and connect it. Now we're going to take the side with the green, white, and brown wires and we're going to route that through the passenger side back to the tail light. We're going to go through the cross members. You're going to have to go one lead at a time. It's going to be a hole back on the corner of the cross member. You can just insert the lead through there. You're going to have to go one at a time. Go ahead and just pull it through like so. Now we're going to have to get these other white and brown ones through as well. Might be a little more tricky because the wire is already through. But just take your time. And now we're gonna go back and make our connections at the tail light. Now you can see we've brought the tail light wires through that slot right there. We'll make our connections. We should go green to green, white to white, and brown to brown. Now we're gonna back up and also connect the amber light, white to white, and brown to brown. Now we'll do the same for the driver's side. Now you're also going to get a lot of these clips right here. This is going to be helpful for securing your wire to the rail so it's not kind of flopping around at all while you're traveling. All you got to do is you want it spun the right way to where the smaller end is going to go on the rail right here. So we're going to just take the wire, put it up through there like so, and then we'll snap it on. You're going to get 10 of these and you can put them wherever you choose. I, put I would put five on the passenger side and then five on the driver's side. Now we've gone ahead and assembled our fender. We just took two of the brackets and used these flat headed carriage screws. And then we took the bolts or the nuts and tightened them down all the way. Now from here it's going to go on the side right above our tire. Just like this over the hole. And then we're going to take a flat washer with the hardware it through. Might be easier just to go ahead and get one through, set the other side of the fender down on the tire, take a flat washer and a lock nut, put it on that side, and then just tighten that down. And then lift up the other side. Once you have it threaded, you can do the same thing. Now we'll go ahead and just tighten it down all the way. Now we're gonna get our safety chains assembled at the tongue of our trailer. Now it's gonna be easy to do this if you can get it up on a jack or something like that. Just prop it up in the air so you don't have to pick it up. Now all we're gonna do is take our bolt right here, put a flat washer on it, feed it through the last link of one of our safety chains. Then we're gonna put another flat washer on, kind of like sandwiching it. Then go through the other safety chain, like so. So we're through both chains. Then we're going to grab our bracket right here. It's going to sit just like this, this little notch is going to go in the second hole, which is down there. Now we'll just bring that bolt up through, make sure you get the other part of the bracket into that notch. And then on the inside of the tongue, we're gonna take the lock nut 
we're going to thread that on. Now we'll just grab our socket and wrench and tighten it all the way up. You do want to make sure you keep that bracket in its slot. It could be a little difficult to do until you get it tightened up. No need to over tighten, just get it pretty snug. Now we're going to get our coupler installed. All we got to do is set that on top of the tongue of our trailer. Now we're also going to install the handle with it. You can choose what other side, whatever side you want it to go on. Doesn't necessarily matter. But we're just going to make sure we line it up with the coupler. I'm going to grab our included hardware, slide it through, and take our two lock nuts and thread those on. And then tighten it down. Now you want to tighten down until you don't feel any or hear any wobbling or rattling around. You will have to tighten it down until the coupler is sort of pinching down on the tongue right there. Don't over tighten though. If you over tighten it and warp the tongue at all, that'll compromise the functioning of your coupler. Now one thing I do want to point out is that Malone only includes their Microsport instructions, not for the Microsport low bed. So in the instructions it's going to ask if you have the bar which has a curve coming up kind of raising the height of the bed. Instead, it's going to be the straight bars. Now, once you get the rear bar installed, it's just gonna sit on that rear support frame right there. The second one, which is more towards the front, is going to sit 48 inches from that spot. Doesn't have to be exact, just get it as close as you can. That's what we'll measure. I'm measuring from the front of that bar to the back of this one. And you do wanna make sure you measure on both sides so you get the bar to be straight. And before you tighten down your U-bolts all the way, don't be afraid to double check your measurements. So now we're just gonna set the U-bolt over top of the bar. It's gonna kinda go diagonally on the bar around the frame right here. Now we're gonna bring our bracket up onto the bolt. You do wanna be sure you avoid any of those clips if you have them in that direction. Now we're going to put our lock nuts on and then repeat this process for the other side. Now on both sides, we're gonna tighten up the U-bolts until they're just making contact with the frame right there and they're flush with it. We don't wanna tighten it all the way just yet because we wanna go back and make our measurements to make sure that the crossbar is still straight. There we go, now we got some wiggle room. Now repeat this process for the other side. Now like I said, we're gonna go back and measure again. We just wanna make sure that our two crossbars are straight and they're gonna be parallel to each other. There we go. Now one other thing I wanna make sure you guys know is that you do wanna measure your overhang on both sides to make sure that's even. So you can kinda of pick whatever point you want to. I'll just go to the edge of this U-bolt and measure up to there. And I'll do that for both sides to make sure that it's even. And there we go, it's even. So now we can go ahead and tighten down on U-bolts all the way. Now we're gonna get our top crossbars in place. They're not actually going to sit on top of the U-bolts like it is right now. It's just a nice starting point so it can have somewhere to sit. You do wanna make sure that the pre-drilled holes are on the sides and not the top and bottom. So now we're gonna go in closer towards the trailer to these side holes on the bottom crossbar. We're going to set that bracket down on top like so. Then we're going to feed this bolt through that slot and out the other side. Then we're going to put a lock nut on it. Now we need to raise up this bar, put the bolt under it like so, so it's gonna sit on top of that bolt and then thread the lock nut on. And then do this for the other side. Now before we tighten it down all the way, we're going to measure our overhang to make sure that's even on both sides. Once you've made those adjustments, go ahead and just tighten it down all the way. Once you have everything tightened down, just repeat this process for your other bar. Now the last thing we need to do is go ahead and get our D-rings installed so we have some tie down points for whatever we want to load. Now the easiest way to do this is we're going to first feed the bolt through the D-ring. You're going to want the side with the four little indents right there to be touching crossbar. 
Now what we're going to do is slide our lock, lock nut in. Now we're just going to take the bolt and begin to thread it on. Once you get it down as far as you can get it, the directions suggest getting a screwdriver and getting it under your lock nut to hold it in place. However, we found that it's easier if you just get a pair of needle nose pliers. We're just gonna slide it in so we can grip the top and bottom. If you just use that screwdriver, you could grind away at the sides of your lock nut. It could just make it very hard to get out. So once we have a grip on that, we're just gonna take our wrench and then tighten it down. Now don't forget to put your end caps on. You're gonna have four small ones for the four crossbar ends. Goes in pretty easy. Just once you get it in, give it a little force, push it all in, like so. Now you're also going to have four bigger ones to put on the crossbar support ends right here. It's gonna go on the same way. Thank you all for watching. That's gonna do it for our look at the Malone Microsport low bed trailer. Hope this helped.